So I, as always, salute each and every one with the honorable and the blessing words of grace, mercy, and peace. May they be multiplied unto you on today. It is within the favor of the Lord God that we have the opportunity to always be postured to receive what thus saith the Lord in his word. Amen. So in that, I've been blessed with the honor and privilege to present on today. And I was asked to present on the subject, don't let what you see cause you to lose focus on God's season and timing. Don't let what you see cause you to lose your spiritual focus. Now, even though I'm in a teaching platform, I know some folks is feeling this in the spirit because it's truth. In the reality of the matter, we as believers, it seems to be trenchant that anything that we set our minds to do according to the kingdom, there's always something that's waiting to be a distractor. Uh, are are y'all hearing me? Yes. And so when we understand, when we come to the realization as believers that there's a distractor in the game, then you should already know what you need to do to be prepared and make the move. Amen? Amen. So now in that, let, let me bring this to your attention as well. Based on this specific subject about you staying focused in God's timing and seasoning, I believe there's eight key things that I'm going to bring to your attention by Scripture. Because I believe, according to the Word of the Lord, it always gives foundation to everything that we do. Oftentimes, we'll kind of move on some things. But if I don't have a word from the Lord on the thing that I'm moving on, it causes me to sway or to cause me not to complete the process. And see, I believe everything that the Lord God gives us from start to finish is always about process. It's always about process. We just have to understand that we have to be in the mix of the process in order for us to come into the place that the Lord God wants us to be. Amen. Amen. So, so in that, I like how the man of God had said here earlier, and I'm going to use that kind of as a foundation of scripture, because with the theme being about God's season and timing, famous scripture we're all, all aware of is Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. And I've thrown some things in here because I really want people to really understand what the word is saying from the dialect that it's been translated from because so often based upon our western world culture we miss the depth of what something means and it causes us to miss the move of God so in that Ecclesiastes 3 says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven now if I can, if I can teach you something for a minute Here's, here's the thing that you got to get. As the theme is about seasons and times according to God. Watch this. The word season used in Ecclesiastes is about a divine appointment or occasion. The word time is about a divine appointed opportunity or experience. Now, if y'all are listening to me in the spirit, if we can be prophetic, not pathetic. <laughs> if we can be prophetic for a moment, notice I didn't say anything about chronology. Because, see, according to this reality that we live in, we use a watch, which is a chronograph, because it measures time. It was said last night. But see, understand, nowhere in the scripture when we deal with what God says about time and season, does he say anything about measure time. Amen. That's only for us. It was the ancient Sumerians that created the, the, the watch, created time being tracked because they wanted to measure occasions or opportunities or experiences that happen in this reality. I hope I'm giving somebody something that's blessing you. So, so based on that, where I'm trying to get you even in this teaching is this kingdom people, time has no relevance on God's time and season for you. Amen. That's why in the reality of the matter is we're, we're talking about 
we're coming to the end of time, it's really actually what you're saying. Time is ending. Eternity starts when time ends for you. When you get out of chronology of trying to measure what is supposed to be something that is appointed unto you as an occasion or an experience, now you're thinking eternal. And that is the mindset the kingdom people have to be in in order to prepare you for eternity. Am, am I giving somebody something? Amen. So, in saying that, I believe there are some scriptures that will kind of gauge us. Because if y'all notice on one of my slides, I said there's about eight specific points that I believe by scripture that's going to help you stay focused. Because now that I've given you a V8 moment, I've given you something that you say, ah, this is something I hadn't looked at it in that perspective because it had not been presented to me like that before. Now, let me see what do I need to do to stay in eternal thinking? Because if I'm going to focus on kingdom things, it requires me to be in spiritual or eternal thinking versus natural. The reality of the matter is what pulls you off focus is because you keep diverting back to natural thinking. A a am I making sense? Every time you try to put yourself on what the word says, the Lord God has given you a word in order to take you to an eternal place. But what happens is you begin to shape eternal thinking around natural reality. Okay. So, so in that... One scripture that I believe that you should meditate on, which I believe gives three, three points of how we should work in staying focused as spiritual people, is Proverbs 4, verse 25, 26, and 27. So when I look at Proverbs 4, 25, one of the first things that I need to do to help me stay focused in a spiritual place of timing and seasoning versus natural is look the right way. See the verse says. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. In reality what that says is. Watch this. Kingdom people you got to get once again beyond thinking natural. We, we would read that verse and say. Okay wherever my eyes are focused. No your eyes will tell lies to you. See, it's a whole other teaching that I did, but believe it or not, all of your faculties, as we say, our senses, believe it or not, are gates. Every one of them touch who you are on the inside. Your eyes, your taste, your smell, all of those are gateways to touch who the inner man is for you to formulate a thought. So, so in that, just like if, if uh, what I see right now with my physical eyes, it's a, it's a video camera that's making a recording that's now speaking something to my inner man to formulate a, co a concept or a construct. So if I'm going to get past what this reality is giving me, then I have to understand that when it talks about my eyes according to the scriptures, it's really talking about my mental qualities, my mental capacity. So let my mental capacity or my inner man's ability look in the right direction or become focused. And in that, let thy eyelids look straight. Now, even though the verse says eyelids, eyelids is really referring to eyelashes, if I can give somebody something. Because technically, the metaphorical meaning of your eyelashes, they're supposed to be symbolic of the rays of the sun coming into you. So the Bible says, if I let my mental capacity look in the right direction, then I should also be letting the rays of the light of what's right be what's before me as I'm looking at it because it's my enlightenment. Verse 26 says, ponder the path and let all thy way be established. 
So that tells me that the second thing that I should do to try to stay focused is to consider what I am establishing. And I apologize for the error there, but I, it's, it's really establishing. I have to weigh out. I have to, if I'm going to be a focused person, then that means I put priority in my life that everything that comes in, it has to meet a scale of balance. Amen. If, if I'm not one that lets stuff come in and I put it on a scale of balance, then that's why my life is always out of balance. And when I'm out of balance, it causes me to teeter and totter just like a ship on the sea. And that means as I teeter and totter, I will always struggle with focus. So I have to impart within my life a mindset that says, man, anything that comes to me, I need to balance and weigh that thing out. The third point I bring to your attention is in verse 27. Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Meaning, maintain your focus. The thing is that we have to understand is as the Bible tells you not to turn, it says don't compromise. See, the world likes to operate in a mindset of compromising. That, that, that's the, 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 the situation that we're in now. If we as kingdom people begin to look at the world, we see that the world doesn't have focus because it's a world that has made compromising its God. Yes, yes. And see, that becomes a dangerous place for kingdom people. That's why I believe the Lord God gave laws and commandments because he said, if I give these to you, then what happens is you will know what my standard is. And see, if you don't stick to a standard, then that means you are one that compromise and you will continue to adjust until you find there's no adjustment that you can make. Am I making sense? I don't mean to sound like I'm in another stratosphere, but I'm excited and passionate about this because I want people to be able to make change when it comes to knowing what the truth of the word says to show you how to make sure you're in the right direction. Amen. So and it's still moving on. I like how Romans 8, 5 and Colossians 3, 2 gives us a fourth thing to consider to help us stay focused is to pursue after spiritual or heavenly things. Because, see, in this, if we're going to be focused for the Lord, the question we have to ask ourselves is, what is our focus driven towards? Amen. Is it just driven to do what the Bible says and what the Bible says not to do? Or do we have it focused on things to carry us to a spiritual or heavenly place? Now, I don't have it up here, but I'm going to give you a sidebar to really give a revelation on this. As the Bible tells you to lay up your treasures in heaven... Has anybody ever looked at the word treasure in the Greek? What's, what's deep, man of God, is the word treasure comes from the Greek word thesaurus. Now where have you heard the word thesaurus other than being another type of a dictionary of meaning of words? So the Bible is telling you that the treasure you lay up in heavenly places or in spiritual realms is the words that come out of your mouth. What words you have in you are what are building your wealth in eternity. But if you don't have no words, somebody learning something. If you don't have the right words in you, then you don't have anything to focus on. See, what happens is when the right words come into your life that people speak over your life, what happens is you gravitate around those words. So that means those words become a focus and they bring value to you because they're speaking what you are already existing as in an eternal place. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me digress. I don't mean no harm. Let me digress. Let me digress. 
All right, so in Romans 8, 5, the scripture says, For they that are after, or along with, or aligning themselves with the flesh, which means what you see with your natural eyes, your human nature, do set their mind on these things of the flesh. Meaning, whatever you think about, you'll begin to entertain that. Your flesh will become your entertainment. Your flesh will become what you exercise. Anything that you think about in the natural, you begin to exercise that because that's your entertainment. That's what you like to do. But they that are after or that will align or come along with the spirit or a divine mind. The things of the spirit become now what they pursue. So that means I'm, if, I, if I'm going to be a spiritual person and I'm going to think on spiritual things, then those things now can't be something that I have an idle mind towards. It's something that I've got to pursue after. It means there has to be at Activity that goes along with what I'm doing. See, as people even talk about having faith, the word faith in the Greek is pistis, which means really passion and conviction towards what's your truth. It's not what you believe in. It's what you are passionate and convicted about that will cause you to be one that will move after that truth. So in that, my pursuit means that my faith becomes Active to help me stay in my focus. Amen. If you Rudy pooped and ain't doing nothing, then that's another reason you'll fall away from staying focused. Amen. Something has to be in your life that makes you excited and say, hell or high water can come, but I am not going to adjust. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to shift. I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay on the course. Amen. Colossians 3 2 says, set your affections or your thoughts or your mind and even your opinion on things that are above, not on things on the earth. See, how is it you want to go to a place that you don't think about? Okay, it's deep. Oh, my bad. We want to go somewhere, but we don't want to think about where we want to go. We want to be eternal, but we don't want to think about eternal things. And see, if I I let myself get there, then what happens is now that becomes my priority. It now assist with what my focus is. We would hope men of God and women of God would always be giving you not only a word, but a word that keeps you in a spiritual place. See, that's why it's a dangerous thing when men of God and women of God are preaching word that is really a Dr. Feelgood message or something that moves you emotionally but does not touch you spiritually to get you to a place that you want to think on spiritual things. Amen. Okay, let me move from the oohs and the ahs. Okay, so, so, so now it brings us to another point. Notice that I've hovered around, how do you think? Philippians 4.8, but, but as we say, Proverbs 23.7, the Bible says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Oh, brr, let me roll that back. As a man thinketh in his inner man, he becomes what he thinks about. You have the ability as kingdom people, because you're spiritual, not, 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 not fleshly. You have the ability to become what you continue to think about. And see, if I continue to think about God in, in, in Psalms 8... Who is man that thou art mindful of him? If God has a mind full of you, when will you have a mind full of God? Mm. 
Okay. So, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to think godly, the Bible begins to give us what is the perspective of what we should think about. Because, see, if an idle mind is a devil's workshop, then what happens is the laws of physics are two things can't occupy the same space. If you think about worldly things, then there's no room for a godly thing to, to be in place. So, so then if I remove an ungodly thought, what are you replacing it with? If you ain't replacing it with nothing, then that opens up the opportunity for something ungodly to step in and feel what you vacated. So then... That tells me, then, as the writer tells us in Philippians 4, 8, these are the things that I need to think on. As I move some things that have been killing my focus, these are things that I got focus on. Number one, whatsoever things are true. Meaning, not just whatsoever things are trustworthy, it also means whatsoever things have been spiritually revealed to you. Yes. Anything that's true is something from the spirit that has been revealed that you didn't know before. So that means if I put myself in the mindset of thinking about the truth of the word, Jesus says, I can give you now revelation that you never got before. Because your mind is focused in the right place that it can handle having things revealed or unconcealed that were never unconcealed to you before. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. Whatsoever things are honest, meaning whatsoever things add value to your character. Amen. Whatsoever things add value to your character. Now see a lot of people in that... I know that's a whole nother sermon. That's a whole nother, whole nother teaching there. But a lot of people miss this thing about understanding the character because the character is in the name. Okay, and some just thought I, I just gave a catchphrase. Okay, let, 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 me, let me elaborate. When you look at the word name in the Greek, it's anoma. And the word anoma means character. Okay. Remember when Jesus says, anything you ask in my name shall be given unto you? He really said, anything you ask in my character shall be given unto you. When I understand that the name is about the character, then now I understand how valuable character is because character is what's ushering me into eternity. Many people ain't thinking about their character. They think about doing right, but they ain't thinking about their character changing. So I have to also understand that if I'm going to think about the right thing, I got to think about my stank character getting corrected in order for me to be focused in the right place. If I ain't thought about nothing about me changing in how I treat folks, then I'm already in the wrong place in how I'm thinking. Or my thinking is fake. Oh, y'all hearing me? The Bible says whatsoever things are just. What I need to think about if I'm going to stay focused, I need to think about what is just in my life or what is justice. I need to think that if I'm going to have a righteous or a just life, there's got to be some kind of divine laws or some equitable character that I have to meditate on in order for me to be able to measure what justice is. See, I can't, I can't continue to look at Lady Justice and think what the world says justice is, is my justice. If y'all notice, Lady Justice has a sash over her eyes and she's symbolic of the pagan goddess Themis. But if you notice, the scale that she carries is unbalanced. Oh, yes. mm-hmm. So that means whatever the world is giving you as justice will never be balanced out. It's never been weighed out. But I, if, if I put myself and focus on the things of the Lord God and his laws, because his laws are just faithful and true. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. That's a word. Amen. So today, 
the next thing that's in the Bible, it ain't me, it's in the Bible. It says, think on whatsoever things that are pure. Now this one may really cause people their struggles. Because many people are not causing themselves to be to a place of accountability to say, let me think about those things that are clean of my carnality. We think about good things, but do we think about God things? Because a good thing is not necessarily a God thing, whereas a God thing is not necessarily a good thing. A good thing may look good, but it ain't God. Whereas some things that are God may not look good to you, and it's really because it's, it's interfering with your emotions. It's just how you feeling. Y- y'all know, you say, I ain't feeling that. <laughs> it's there, it's in the way, I ain't feeling that Jesus today. But it's all you. So I have to think, engage, and keep my carnal thinking in check in order for me to stay focused in the opportunities and the occasions and the seasons of the experiences that the Lord has for me. This one is deep too. Whatsoever things are lovely. Can can I give y'all something on that? Like this because Lord... Okay, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all know how, how we as Christians, we feel good because we know a couple of Greek words or stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll throw around, yeah, God is agape love. Okay, so we, we feel good because we're, we're saying it's unconditional love towards others. All right. But the word agape is the root word of agapeo. Now, why am I bringing that to your attention here, other than the fact that the word agapeo, if I put it in layman's terms, means hospitality. So really, I can be as godly as I want to to you, but if you don't feel welcome, then I'm not showing you the full extent of what God's love is. See, I I can be as deep as I want to be with the scripture. But if you, at the end of the day, don't feel welcome Mm -hmm. being in my presence or or being around me, Mm -hmm. then I have not processed being lovely. See, if I'm going to think love, then I need to be real with love. That folks say, I love being in your presence. We ace boon coons whenever you're around. It's like we long lost friends. Are y'all, y'all? So, 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 so we have to be, as we say, these are actions. You, you, you cannot continue to move in focus of the Lord unless you are a person that verbs begin to work your life. That you're doing something as an action based on what you think about. Remember, as I said before, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. You can't thank you something that you don't live out. Yes, yes, yes. And so this verse is telling you and shaping you in what you need to be thinking on so that your mind is not wasted in kingdom things. Now the Bible says, whatsoever things are of good report. Not whatsoever things are a report. Uh, uh, Y'all know. Uh, Whatsoever things are drama. Uh, Whatsoever thing has been photobombed. It's saying whatsoever things are a good report. Or things that are well spoken of. If I'm going to stay focused in the Lord. Then I also need to understand in his season and timing for my life it is good practice for me to think about those things that are good to be thought about not fleshly to be thought about but good or beneficial to my spirit because the Bible says if there be any virtue or moral excellence 
and if there be any praise, and if I may, it's, it's all right, I know time is still going, but if there be anything that's virtuous, of moral excellence, what that's referring to is pride on the good spectrum. Okay, most of the times we as kingdom people, when we think about pride, we think pride automatically in arrogance. And that is the negative perspective of pride. But there is a such thing as good pride. Good pride is one being in a place of excellence, of thinking, based upon the standard that the Lord God has given. So, so in that, it's all right to be prideful because, you know, for those that have been in the military, we talk about having pride in our unit. It's not about us being arrogant about the unit. It's we have a sense of feeling good about what we're a part of. And so if I understand virtue, virtue speaks to me being in the positive place of pride that works for my better good. So in that, if there be any virtue, if there be any moral excellence, ethical excellence that is comparative to the word of the Lord, and if there be any praise, meaning rememberable thing, most of the time that we think of praise, we, we think about uh, us giving thanks or our adoration or our celebration of the Lord. But depending on the Greek word that's used in the Bible, here in the verse, it means anything that is rememberable. It says, think on these things. Because see, the reality of the matter is your thoughts are critical to your eternal existence. Y'all got to hear me. Your thoughts are critical to your eternal existence. Because think about this. I'm going to touch everybody's theology. Have you ever thought that your thoughts have to come to mind even when you get judged? How are you going to remember what you did? Uh. <laughs> your thoughts are being recorded and they're brought back up or they're booted up even in your judgment. So the question becomes, what are your, what are, what's, what's being recorded in your thinking? Ah. Are y'all with me? I don't mean no harm today, huh? Still feeling excited, y'all. Okay. Can I give y'all a couple of more? These three, these three. Still, if you're going to stay spiritually focused, I believe Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 also hits home. Because here's the thing, number, number, out of these, verse 1 hones in on the fact that if I'm going to be focused, I not only have to think a certain way, I've got to walk a certain way as well. But watch this. Let me, let me give you some revelation. According to the word of the Lord, walking is not in the sense of like you thinking. We think walking is based upon putting one foot in front of the other to go a direction. Amen. All right. But when you look at the word walk in the Hebrew, it means to proceed forward while being led. So it has nothing to do with what your feet are doing. It has all to do with you being led in a direction by the Spirit. So, 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 so in that, what the word says, it says, blessed is, meaning beneficial is it for you if you walk not in the counsel or advice yeah. or the purpose yeah. or what Pookie and them is telling you because we, we've been rolling as boys if, 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 if you don't let your boys take you out of the spiritual dimension of purpose then the Bible says or on the ungodly 
nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I cannot let the way everybody else think cause me to go nowhere. Amen. I like how my former archbishop used to say, he said, don't let your friends prophesy your future. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Don't let, meaning, don't let people that are in a sinful place that ain't going nowhere cause you to morph into being the same thing. When you find yourself at a standstill and, and you're not moving on the things of the Lord God, then what has happened is you have allowed someone else to step into your life and begin to readjust what you see as your direction. Amen. So, so, so it says, be not in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth or dwelleth in the seat or the abode of the scornful, meaning those who are on the other end of the spectrum of pride called arrogance. Yes. Next, we have to find pleasure in the law of God. All right. See, y'all, ain't nobody shot it with me right there. Uh, li li listen, listen to me. It's one thing for the word of the Lord to have the law Amen. as instruction. And see, for those who don't know, the, the, the word law means precepts and statutes. Right, right. Yeah. Precepts means instruction. Statutes means prescription. Amen. Somebody didn't get it. Amen. <laughs> okay. If you went to the doctor... And the doctor assess your illness. Uh -huh. The doctor says, I'm going to write you a prescription. Right. Amen. Amen. So what happens is you go to the pharmacy. Get it and when you go to the pharmacy, they fill the prescription. But watch this. Legally, they have to attach the instructions to the prescription. <laughs> y'all ain't learned. Come on. Are, are y'all hearing me? Amen. So then that means any prescription has to have instructions Amen. for correct dosage of the one using. Amen. So the Bible is nothing more than your prescription with instructions. But some ain't going to get the prescription like they supposed to. Ah, okay. Okay. I ain't trying to preach. I'm just trying to teach. Uh, okay, okay. So watch this. If folks can find pleasure in THC, oh yeah, get high. When watch this. When do I focus on finding my own pleasure in the law Amen. that the law can make me high that I still got my own faculties? <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. So the Bible says, it's the Bible that says it. It says, but his delight or pleasure or joy or happiness him getting high in the spirit is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Oh, somebody got processed that for a minute. It's in the law of the Lord. And his law doth he meditate. Now see, this is deep when folks that take drugs meditate on the drug when they ain't taking it but yet the word of the Lord says if you meditate on it whether you taking it right now or not it's a day and night I ah, see See, see, even, 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 and I don't mean to go in that direction, but even folks that use drugs, it can only give you a 15 minute high. That's right. It's only 15 minutes. But the Bible says, woman of God, that this is day and night. I've got a prescription. If I stay focused on the word, the prescription is going to meet my daytime and my nighttime need. Watch this. Watch this. Night quill and day quill. Uh, are y'all 
Okay. 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 Okay, y'all. Y'all with me. Y'all with me. Y'all with me. You with me. You with me. So, so, still, let me give you the last point. Let me get, let me get the last point. This, this one, this one is real deep here. Because staying focused in the Lord is going to require you to get planted. Okay, but I'm fixing to mess y'all up. Okay. Can we read for a minute? Can, can we read for a minute? The verse says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay, can, can I... It's all right, I give y'all something. Okay, watch this. First of all, the verse says, He shall be like a tree planted. Watch this. The word planted means transplanted. Transplanted means to move. If I'm focused in the Lord and I'm walking or proceeding, while being led, uh-huh. then that means I'm moving somewhere. I'm not at a standstill. But the Bible says, you shall be like a tree that's being transplanted. Right. Come on. Amen. You are being moved yeah. for the sake. <laughs> you are being put put in another position based on your focus Come on, yes, Lord. in seasoning which means divine occasions and time meaning divine opportunity or experiences so that means every experience that you have is planting you somewhere that you currently are Amen. So, keep walking with me. It says, you'll be by the rivers of water. Now, I know somebody's got the word. Please turn somebody to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Can somebody read that for me? King James. King James. Go ahead, man of God. And he showed me a pure river of water life, clear as crystal. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, and of the Lamb, in the midst of the streets of it, Amen. and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruits, and yield her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were of were for the healing of the nations. Okay, now, the writer was writing in the Old Testament, didn't have the revelation of what John gives us in Revelation in the New Testament. So, in this, it says, my focus is for me to also understand that everything that I'm doing in the precepts is me being like the tree that's in eternity. If Jesus is the tree and he's the springs of waters of life, he says, if you stay focused, you'll be like me because I can plant you somewhere else. And watch this. That bringeth forth or produces fruit. Mm-hmm. Now, for those that are Bible reads in Galatians 5.22, we talk about the fruit, not fruits, plural, fruit of the Spirit. The word fruit is from the Greek word corpos, but in the reality as it applies to you, it means the character of the Spirit. Right, okay. Amen. So, 
You are producing based on what you experience in your focus. You are producing character that's planting you. I am trying to preach. I, I'm just trying to teach. So you are getting moved because character is being produced in you because of your focus. Amen. And then the Bible says in his season or in his experience, in his occasion, in his opportunity, his lease shall not wither. See, that's why this is a spiritual conversation that I'm giving you, not a physical. See, natural seasons cause things in the environment to wither. Amen. Uh, whatever I grow in the spring or the summer, when fall comes, I know it's been lost because it withers. But when I spiritually understand that seasons and time are divine opportunities and occasions, there's no such thing as withering in your life. Because the character that you're being developed in is something that is eternal for you to be in eternity. That's why you don't age there. There's no such thing as death. (laughs) My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. The Bible. Amen. So, I'm trying to wrap this up. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to wrap this up. Preacher still got to preach later, so uh, I'm trying to wrap this up. So, so in this though, what it says is that your leaves based on divine focus shall not wither. Everything that the Lord develops you in in character because you focused and you've applied scriptural precepts to how you do things it's meant for you to be developed in eternal existence. And see, in that, at the end of the day, you get your shout on. Because the verse says, And whatsoever he do with shall prosper. It will be successful. Focus, divine focus, speaks to your success. It's when you don't have focus or don't put that in the rudiment of how you do things that you find things are not operating successfully for you. So the more that you focus, regardless of what's going on around you, because see, even, even as we talk about atmospheres, they touch on atmospheres, but watch this. You know, the atmosphere doesn't set you. You set the atmosphere. I... That's right, that's right, that's right. If I'm I'm walking in divine focus, regardless of how junky the atmosphere is where I'm going, the atmosphere will shift to me because I'm on the scene. That's 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 why that's why folks go look and say, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Y'all, y'all, y'all feel what I'm saying. Everybody will stop talking. They get worse than EF Hutton. Everybody will stop talking and look to see who came into the room. It's because they're atmosphere of divine focus has come on the scene. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So. 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 I'm going to digress. I'm going to digress. 
but, but I pray that everybody got something from this that's going to carry you into the next place in God. Amen. Because as, as we understand, you know, as, as all have said, you know, we are an apostolic and a prophetic people. Amen. And see, one of the most significant things, as I was sharing with someone earlier about prophecy. Prophecy is not just to tell you your future, but prophecy is to prepare you for the next course of events. We have to be a prepared people and see focus is something that speaks to preparation. If you want the prophetic to speak into your life, you have to be conducive to being prepared. You have to become conducive to focus. And if you don't become conducive, what happens is you continue to miss the prophetic moves of the Lord because you're not one that's, that's going to be prepared. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.